4.6 liter, four valve mod motor with a Paxson supercharger. How do you care valve float? We did it with nitrous. This video, we dyno tested a 4.6 liter, four valve modular Ford. We supplied boost with a Paxton centrifugal supercharger. Now we ran into a valve float problem and couldn't rev the motor any higher. We didn't have any more pulleys, so how do we make more power? Easy, combine boost with nitrous. Our test motor was a 4.6 liter, four valve modular Ford motor. It came as a crate motor from Sean Holland Motorsports. It was originally one of the 10 to one crate motors he offered back in the day. Now we upgraded this with a set of FR500 Ford Racing four valve heads. Not just out of the box, we had them fully ported. Unfortunately, we didn't upgrade the valve springs enough to allow us to run the RPM we wanted in this test. That would come back to bite us. Working with those heads was a set of 262 AH comp cams. Those are the mildest of the grinds they offer for that four valve head, but we'd use them on a lot of other projects and they work really well. Now topping this combination was an FR500 intake. We liked the RPM capability of that FR500 intake especially matched with the cam and the heads. Unfortunately, again, valve springs would come back to haunt us. Now, the reason we wanted to run so much RPM was because we had a Paxton centrifugal supercharger, a Novi 2000, easily capable of supporting over a thousand horsepower. Unfortunately, again, RPM was our limiting factor. But don't worry, we had a backup plan. Even though we had no more pulley to spin the blower faster and we couldn't run enough RPM, we always had nitrous oxide. So let's jump into our results. We'll find out how the NA motor did, then how it did once we added the Paxton supercharger and finish things off with our nitrous oxide. This is the power output of our 4.6 liter four valve modular forward motor. This is the Sean Highland a 10 to one crate motor that he supplied with our FR ported FR500 cylinder heads and matching FR500 intake and those uh, comp 262 cams. Now you'll notice that this thing's revving or kind of wants to rev out past 7,000 out to 7,500 and a four valve mod motor will rev obviously a lot higher than that. And again, our problem was that we just didn't put enough valve spring in it because the cylinder heads definitely had more to give and this intake did too. But we'll give you an idea uh, how well this intake works or what it was designed to do and what we wanted it to do, especially with our centrifugal supercharger that we're going to be adding in a little bit. But if we compare the power output uh, and the power curve of this combination to the same motor run with the factory Cobra intake, actually naturally aspirated Cobra intake, we get this. So maybe if I get rid of the torque numbers, you'll be able to see this a little bit better. It's a little confusing like that. This is just the horsepower curve of the two. The red, the red curve is the factory Cobra intake, which works fairly well up to 6,000 or 6,500. Obviously it would make in this range down here in the 5,000 RPM range and, and below, uh, it's making a lot more torque than the short runner uh, FR500 and the FR500 actually is a dual runner intake. We were only using the shortest runners. We actually wired it open. If you open up and check inside the lid, you can see it's got another set of butterflies that open up and it's got an actuator on it that you can program to open at a specific RPM. So it's actually a dual runner, not unlike the Integra GSR that Honda did or that Acura did back in the day. So anyway, we didn't run both the runners. We just ran the short one to give us a lot more RPM as you can see. But that short runner, this FR500 intake manifold really wanted to rev much higher than the factory Cobra intake manifold and actually would have kept going probably out past 7,500 if we would have had the right valve spring in it, even with those mild cams. But as you can see, this combination works very well. So now let's find out what happens after we added our Paxton Novi 2000 supercharger. Once again, this is the power output of our naturally aspirated 4.6 liter four valve from Sean Highland with the FR500 heads. And in the previous one, I forgot to mention what the power peaks were. So this thing made 483 horsepower out here at 7,400 RPM. You can see that the valve train is already starting to get a little jaggedy out there. It's, it's unhappy because of the valve string. But 483 horsepower and 376 foot-pounds of torque. Now let's find out what happens after we installed our 
Paxton Novi 2000 supercharger. This was non-intercooled, and an intercooler actually would have been a really good idea for this thing. So there's our Paxton supercharger. We take a look at that. We're at 813 horsepower, but you can see here, see this big drop off? Not good. We're getting into valve float, and I think we probably were getting into uh, a little problem with belt slippage there too. The way that we had the belt set up was not optimum. I think that ideally this thing, if we were gonna try to make, I mean, this thing was on its way, definitely could have made a thousand horsepower with the right combination of, of um, pulleys and stuff. But we uh, were running into a couple of problems. One of them was valve train related because we saw that even on the NA motor. And then I think that this might also uh, been compounding that. So we were trying to fight that and we were not very successful as you can see. We tried again and again and again. We tried tightening the belt. We even tried putting track bite on it on the belt which does work for a couple of runs. Unfortunately, it eventually just disintegrates the belt and doesn't work out very well. But for a couple of passes, it'll add some stick to that belt and if you got to make a hero pass, that's definitely an option. So this was our Paxton, and as you can see, we were disappointed because that thing was still traveling up pretty rapidly, and if we could have run this thing to 7,500 or even past that, this thing still wanted to make power. I wish I would have had an intercooler, wish I would have had ice water. You know, this is back in the day. We did a lot of foolish things, but we couldn't uh, do the power that we wanted, and I didn't have another pulley so we could increase the boost. I didn't run an intercooler on this, so we were gonna do the next best thing. We're gonna add some nitrous. After looking at the power output, the power curves of our naturally aspirated motor, and then after adding the Paxton, which allowed us to make over 800 horsepower, that was still a far cry from actually where we wanted to be, which was, you know, we wanted to be at 1,000. But right now, given what was going on, hey, we'll settle for, we're, we will settle for 900. So we were trying to figure out a way to get there. And like I said, since I didn't have an intercooler and we didn't have any other pulleys. And as a side note, it's a really good idea not to try to run this kind of power, I mean, this kind of flow from the supercharger with just a six rib belt. Even an eight rib belt probably is a little on the sketchy side. I mean, I like to run cog drives on uh, real high horsepower stuff. And by that, I mean like four digit stuff, thousand horsepower stuff. I know that there are good serpentine belts that are, you know, 10 rib stuff and 12 rib stuff. And you can definitely use that, but a cog belt never slips. So the blower is always there, which I like during testing, because the last thing I like to do is, when we're running testing, is to have to go back and tighten the belt and do the run again for the test that you were just trying to find out what happened. So I like having the belt always there and a cog kind of solves that. But we didn't have that, so we went ahead and added some nitrous to it, because we knew we'd get a double hit here. It would definitely add power, and since we didn't have an intercooler, hey, we'd get a little bit of intercooling, so we added a 75 horse, shot from a Zex wet fogger kit. And that actually allowed us, because we let the thing cool off just a little bit, and that allowed us to push this thing over 900 horsepower, which was really cool. It made 907.8, so we're gonna call that 908 horsepower. We were happy to get over the 900 horsepower mark. And naturally, since this was intercooled, and we were running a blower and nitrous, and this thing had a 10 to one compression ratio, static compression ratio, we definitely were running this thing on race gas. And like I said, at these kind of power levels and boost levels, which I think this thing was probably 17 or 18 pounds, we definitely should have had an intercooler and ice water would have been even better. But the nitrous worked. You know, it you know obviously doesn't cure valve float. It was able to rev a little bit higher on that run by another 100 RPM maybe before we started getting into trouble. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And compounding this stuff, running boost and nitrous, always a good idea, works on turbos, works on blowers. So what do you think? Can you really use nitrous oxide to cure valve float? Obviously not, but in this case, it worked very well. I mean, we were limited in RPM because of the valve springs. We had no more pulley to increase the boost. So the next logical thing, install nitrous oxide. And using that Zex kit on our Paxton supercharged four valve mod motor, allowed us to exceed 900 horsepower. Now we know there's a lot more power left in that combination. All we have to do is put more spring rate in. But sometimes it's the little things that stop you from making big power. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. 
I'll keep doing the videos. Thanks for watching, guys.